Good morning, folks. Good afternoon. Good evening. Welcome back to Cadena Campfire. My name is Tyler Benster, and this is our 27th community call, which would be special enough as a number. But not only that, we have Sir Lenzelot, the one and only Stuart Popejoy, as well as Will, the two co-founders of Cadena, are both with us here today on the stream. Welcome, welcome. Hey, Tyler. Hey, hey. Well, really, really stoked. Hey, Tyler. Hey, hey, Will. Great to be here. Uh, Going to be a fantastic campfire. I know we have a ton of early arrivals. Uh, totally agree. A early arrivals. <laughs> Some people were in the stream as early as uh, 6.22 a.m. That's uh, uh, almost three hours before the stream. That's uh, definitely a record. So uh, super stoked to have everyone here. We're going to have an amazing time with um, you all today. We're going to have plenty of time for live questions. We have some pre-asked questions on Discord. Uh, and this is just a, a great time to talk everything big picture, Cadena, as well as some of the really cool announcements that have just come down the pipeline. So we will catch up on some of these live comments as we go on. But first, we will uh, stick to our usual format here at Campfire. So we'll We'll give a few updates, and then we'll go with a couple of the questions I've been asked on Discord, and then we'll jump into the, the live Q&A. So first on updates, uh, we have a comprehensive recap of the Vue.js Forge Episode 4 has been released. And this participation from Randy, from John, and many others on the team. So this is pretty sweet. Uh, great way to, to get up to date with some of the latest tech developments and uh, Web3. Anything Web3? Episode four. Yeah, come check that out. Should be a, a pretty cool video. Secondly, drum roll, please. Ledger support has been announced. It's out. It's amazing. <laughs> uh, so, you know, this always brings up the my favorite part of the day, which is uh, when Ledger, when Ledger now. And uh, I'm very curious to see what the next when X question uh, becomes. Uh, so that'll be that'll be intriguing. But yeah, happy to chat more about Ledger. I think that's really, really exciting and uh, just a, a huge accomplishment and benefit to everyone. Uh, next up, uh, there's been a clarification article released by Stuart about the 2021 token economics update. So this was a, a previous update uh, that um, some of the OG Cadanians uh, are familiar with and some of the new folks in the community maybe weren't aware of. Uh, but this sort of will help lay the groundwork so everyone's on the same page about the token emission schedule, the platform schedule, uh, et cetera. So feel free to ask questions or clarifications about that. Um, but definitely check out that article. And finally, last and certainly not least, we are very excited to say that there is a limited edition Cadena Campfire NFT that is available today to commemorate your attendance. So the lucky people on the stream right now, uh, get ready because there's a bit.ly link down below here. Bit.ly Campfire 27 NFT. It doesn't get much easier than that to type in a random URL, uh, but uh, hopefully that uh, uh, tickles some folks. And of course, now that I said that, I should probably do nothing for about two minutes while everyone uh, trickles off to... to... <laughs> <laughs> Go claim this thing. Right now is when we drop all the real alpha. Yeah. <laughs> I would hold up on the link until later. It's coming, but it's not here yet. Yeah, I know, right? Right now, no one's going to watch. Oh, it's still someone noticing your glasses, by the way. Oh, good. In the, in the, in the comments. Finally. <laughs> there we go. Very excited about this. <laughs> well, uh, I am currently about uh, 300 comments behind. <laughs> yeah well we'll just give people a moment to to claim some nfts are the nfts limited that is a fantastic question well they're definitely limited in the sense that they will not be claimable forever uh otherwise i have to wait for some advice <laughs> i mean if they did it if they did it with like our you know our current infrastructure then it probably is a collection and collections are finite so. okay there we go. And it's that's finite. how you build up FOMO, right? You know, it's got to gotta have a beginning <laughs> and an end. Absolutely. So maybe while we give people a minute or two to, to stream back in from the, the NFTs, as I see, you know, 
lots of folks were, were curious about that. Uh, we'll give some shout outs. Hello, Cadena, Ireland. Fred, great to have you here. We got Cadena Mining Club in the house. That's pretty sweet. Cadena Ecosystem, Ron the Wizard, Sornet, always so early. Incredible. Yeah, look at that. Uh, Sport Lover, new name for me, but hello, hello. All sorts of folks in here. Yeah, great, uh, great crew of folks. Uh, we will, yeah, like the video, get us more eyeballs, introduce more folks to Cadena. But we will uh, jump in, I think, to some of the pre-asked questions. And then, of course, uh, we really want to make this a, a session with the community, for the community. So please feel free to ask as many questions as you want on the, on the comments, wherever you may be tuning in from. So, but I will jump into a question that was asked by, uh, oh, this is a, a fun one, from old, let's see here, old coder. What's the progress status of Pact 2 in Rust? What's your vision for Pact Everywhere? Uh, there is no progress on Pact 2 in Rust, um, but there's a lot of progress on Pact 2, on Pact Core. Um, so... Pact, you know, was designed as an interpreted language and it was not really, doesn't really compile. You know, you send the code right into the blockchain. That's kind of a feature. Uh, you know, that's why you can see the, that's why it's human readable. That's why you can read the code on the chain. Um, so uh, at one point we were targeting, um, we had, we had a, a path, that we wanted Pact to be running on a bunch of different chains. We have changed that go to market to make it that pact can run in different environments under a thing we're calling cadena platforms um and the idea there is that pack can run on a layer one it can run on a layer two it can run in a serverless environment it can even run on your phone it can run in your browser it can run everywhere and at that point combined with the incredible power of cadena.js uh you know builders have everything they need to use pact and, and deliver all of its advantage, not just on chain, but also in embedded environments for web apps. Um, and this is something as we go into the fall, you're gonna be hearing a lot more, but it's some of the things we talked about in the view, view school, uh, view school topics and things like that. Um, some of that does involve Pact eventually being on Wasm, which, you know, that might be why people are thinking of Rust because Wasm and Rust are kind of closely associated. Um, but, you know, the first thing is to, is this kind of overhaul of the internals of Pact that's called Pact Core, and that will be going live, uh, you know, the, a realistic, uh, realistic target for that is like Q1 or Q2 2024. Um, but we're making lots of progress on it. It's going to result in better performance. It's going to be, I mean, one thing. You know, we do a lot of Cadena that isn't totally visible and, you know, probably don't do a good enough time, good enough job talking about. But some of those things are constantly depending against denial of service attacks and all these kinds of things. Um, that's something that the new pack core is going to is going to have just a much tighter design and not have as many kind of loose ends that we have to keep an eye on. So it's really exciting work. It really features our lead packed engineer, Jose, working uh, working closely with, of course, Emily, who's, you know, always been at the helm of PAC development. So, and finally, it's going to make uh, FB formal verification run a lot better. So this is a big investment we're putting into PAC in the future. Um, you know, this isn't the kind of thing that, like, necessarily makes investors, you know, go wild. It's the kind of thing that makes Gidana different, is that we put the time in, we put the investments in, to always be improving our software so that it just works. And that's that's the way PAX is going to be. And then it's going to just work and it's just going to work everywhere. Right on. I've uh, in scrolling through the comments here, I've discovered that there are now two candidates for the, the following when question. It's either uh, after when ledger, it's now either, well, first of all, when ledger seems to be popular still. So we'll, we'll probably get that for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Secondly, we got when stable coin, strong contender. Uh, and then thirdly, and I think this one is very clearly Stuart inspired. We got when long hair, Tyler. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, Will, yeah, Will kind of, you know, a little. Will's also there. Good, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm never going to be as long as students. <laughs> oh, man, that's great. 
Okay. Uh, have a, a bunch of great questions here. I want to get to as many as possible. I'm going to ask a couple more of these uh, questions from Discord here. Have one from Jad. It seems that currently most projects are using each chain within the Kadena blockchain as separate entities rather than harnessing the full potential of Chainweb. Can you share your vision for how a project could optimally utilize Chainweb? Ooh, I'm ahead of the ticker. <laughs> also, what components of a tech stack are crucial for achieving this? <laughs> Well, you're the designer. So you want me to pick that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I can start with it because then it gets right back to packed afterwards. Um, I the idea was always that I mean we we realized that people are always going to use chain as basically individual chains early on. And then as you know demand begins to expand, then you need to grow into the horizontal scaling. This has always been one of the things that makes you know uh Canada and Chain unique is that we have the actual like roadmap for how you take an app, but how do you scale it up? And it's, you know, well, you multi-thread the app between the different chains. Um, you know, the, the technical stuff that stands in between it, I think a large part of it has been handled by uh, Randy's team with upgrading our entire JavaScript stack and getting that much more usable. And now that that's in place, um, you know, the other parts are much more feasible to start thinking about where you have, like, you know, smart wallets that are auto-load balancing between the various chains uh, where you just go and interact with, Adapt, and then the wallet is actually able to figure out, okay, like where is you know where is this app? Is it a multi-chain app? Should I be interacting with it in different places? And just constructing the uh, you know transactions necessary to you know thread it through the different chains without users ever having to be informed about it. Um, I think one of the upgrades that was crucial for it actually happened maybe it was like a year or two ago, Stuart. I don't remember if uh, what exactly happened, but this was the way that you could you know add signed capabilities that could continue on. Um, for cross-chain stuff. I don't remember what the technical name for that though was. Uh, well, actually, we did nested DEX packs. That was a big one. The idea being that like you could have uh, a DEX like allocate. You could you could say I want to allocate to this uh, this and you could move money from chain next and allocate in the same thing. Because uh, the whole idea is that I mean it's kind of what you're saying because the idea is that you sign for it on one chain. But thanks to the power of Pact, we can make it, you know, completely automatic that it pushes all that state to the next chain and completely trustless. Um, before you would have to actually do a cross chain, as an as an you know, it's one of those in general with crypto, we're always trying to get the user out of having to see how the sausage gets made at like this incredibly low level. So gas stations, so you never have to think about gas. Um, you know, so that like maybe you're checking out an app. It's not like you have to go like open up a wallet just to have like an experience, like a cool experience, like browsing some NFTs or something like that, um, or even creating an NFT. Um, and then, you know, so then there's this cross chain thing where like if you wanted to move funds from one chain to another, you could only do that at the level of the token you were doing it with, which meant that you'd have to move, and your app would do this for you, of course, but your app would basically have to move, get you to sign for it, move money to the other chain, and then have a toaster that pops up and says, oh, you know, your, your money is ready. You can now invest it in this pair. Now you can do that. And, you know, and on the whole multi-chain thing, that's increasingly where apps need to go is, you know, apps can be aware of all their deployments on multiple chains with today's technology. And right now they, 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 give the user experience it's very low level. You want to give them a higher level experience so that they're not aware what chain they're on. They're not aware even, you know, they don't even have to know, a, as much as we love K colon, they don't even have to know a K colon account because they might have many, right? So it's really just getting this thing where you're doing what you want to do. The app's giving you the feedback you need and it's on multiple chains. Right on, right on. We live in a multi-chain world, that is for sure. I mean, we're still the only horizontally scalable layer one blockchain. It's, you know, there's, it's not to say that the other ones don't have scaling, but they have, it's not horizontal. It's, it's hierarchical. It's non-uniform. Um, yeah. We're the only one that you just get more. You add chains, you get more. Mm -hmm. I almost think that uh, instead of, you know, like what components of the tech stack are crucial for achieving this, 
a year ago, I would have said, uh, I think it's the developer user experience, um, like the JavaScript integration, but now that that's been addressed, I almost feel like it's not technical of uh, what's like going to drive people to actually building like larger multi-threaded apps. I think it might just be just, you know, market conditions of, you know, the macro environment just coming out of where it is right now. Because when things are, you know, down and it's the winter, like things are much slower, but then as things begin to pick up, the need for it will increase. And then once the need for that happens, then we'll see people actually building out really the first like truly threaded multi-chain apps. And, yeah. then, and also the, the front ends related to it. And then like once that happens, then I think it takes off more. But yep. know, I think between now and then, it's just there's the nice part of winter is so that you get to just focus on the fundamentals. I was just thinking about how we now have, uh, you know, we had Swarm's Finance on uh, the campfire a couple weeks back. And, you know, a DAO is another perfect example of an application that can relatively easily uh, potentially scale across different chains. You know, you imagine that you have multiple DAOs that are concurrently having a vote at the same time on a proposal, for example. Well, there's no reason why that proposal vote all needs to happen on the same chain. Uh, and so I think there's uh, another aspect, too, is now that there's so many new projects on Kadena that have been launching over the past couple months, um, it'll be really exciting to see over this next uh, frontier that, you know, if if and when people do hit congestion, then that tends to inspire folks to, to prioritize multi-chain. Got a question from I like Pow, um, which is uh, both a proof of work maxi and a ski fiend, as I can take it. Uh, are there any initiatives in the pipeline to lock up KDA as part of the main protocol? For example, like chain relay or locking up in a layer two somehow? Um, yes, in the sense that um, although I want to I want to point out that it's chain relay was never part of the main protocol. Uh, Chain Relay was a beta test of a uh, proof of stake style, uh, well, bonding, bonding secured bridge technology. Um, and, you know, and the whole idea was that people were providing economic security. So, and then we did a big beta test. And unfortunately, you know, we were never able to incubate the right company to go live on it. And that's something that we're actively working on now, not with Chain Relay per se, but it's interesting to mention layer two because um, that is one of the most straightforward uses of something like the Chain Relay technology is to, uh, is to provide economic security in, the, in advance of a fully trustless layer two architecture. Um, so, that you know, that's something that uh, we uh, you know we we like giving people. You know, it's like it's nice to have more more ways to use your KDA, and the bonding was certainly very popular when it was running. And so soon we're going to have these kinds of scenarios where bridge links need to be secured. Um, it's not entirely clear that it'll use the chain relay, but it's there, and that's something that could. I mean, we are moving towards zk based entirely trustless bridging. Um, and there's been a lot of there's been a lot of work in BD, and there's an announcement coming, you know, very very soon uh, about decentralized bridges. But you know, th that's the alpha. I'm not going to spoil it further than that. Um, it's coming very soon to the campfire. Um, and uh, so, but in the interim, our bonding is way better than you know Optimism or Arbitrum. It's it's far more decentralized than that, and you know, and it and KDA is the perfect token to do it with. So it, it, you know, stay tuned. KDA is a perfect token to do it with. And also we're expanding to 22 chains in honor of Taylor Swift. Love that. <laughs> no one expected the next scale would be from 20 to 22 chains, but it may be happening now. Um, <laughs> that's hilarious. All right, uh, we got a bunch of comments that I'm trying to, to catch up on here. Um, but maybe I'll jump back up towards the beginning because uh, I know there's some good questions that were asked. Uh, so actually, this is always a, is an interesting one. Loyal Excel, is Kadena ever going to be EVM compatible? Well, <laughs> uh, this was a active discussion that we were having uh, a few days ago. Um, I'm, I get, do you just want to want to lay out the different options that we were talking about? Sure. Yeah, so like the different options we were talking about, one thing we discussed for a while was having, I, I'm kind of of the opinion of like expanding the network to have more chains and having certain chains be 
uh, actual just EVM chains. So, you know, think of it like a layer two, uh, except that it's a layer one. And all, by the way, it's also horizontally scalable. Um, and like, yeah, so going from, let's say, you know, uh, 20 chains to, you know, 40 or 50, or maybe even just 30. And like the new 10 ones are running EVM. Now that's like one end of the design spectrum extreme. Um, you know, it has its, uh, you know, it has its benefits in that it's, um, and remember, like this is just design discussions that we're still actively engaged in. Um, so it has uh, its benefits in like, you know, it's easier to go to uh, like dedicated EVM projects or anyone else working with EVM and get them to like jump on it and use it. It also integrates us with large chunks of the uh, Ethereum uh, system. And the idea would be like people would come on, use the EVM version, get kind of comfortable and familiar with Fidena, and then realize that we have, you know, a much larger throughput section of PACT on the other side and then start using that one too and probably migrate over over time. Uh, that's one end of the spectrum. Um, kind of next up, I think, is uh, being able to run EVM alongside uh, PACT. Um, how like on the chains that exist now. So you can either have like a, a EVM transaction or a PAC transaction. Um, that one's kind of similar. Uh, it's probably also a bit easier than like actually scaling up and having dedicated chains to EVM. Um, and yeah, some of the interaction on the edges would be difficult there. Also, you know, anytime you're taking another system and putting it into yours, it's tricky. Um, then uh, yeah, the next up is kind of, I think it'd be having light client support too. Is that like the next one over? Of like most, just, yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, it's basically inner API and it, everything from, you know, just supporting the API to just having a light client that works with EVM bridges. Yep. Yeah. And then um, kind of tangential to all of this is a layer two that, you know, either can run some subset or uh, all of the above. Uh, so, you know, a layer two that's running uh, like a chain of like, uh, you know, infrastructure, but it's a, you know, it's proof authority thing. So it has much faster, uh, it has much lower latency, um, but it's also more centralized. Um, we have been finding recently that people are much more interested in us being proof of work than they have historically been at conferences, uh, largely because so much is moving to layer two and people are realizing that layer two is just completely centralized. And, you know, a lot of people are talking about like, oh, we'll eventually we'll go to go decentralized, but, you know, we'll see with that. So uh, yeah, the ability to actually have a layer one that is decentralized and has scale is, uh, you know, is the decentralization that people are actually, you know, getting even more interested with it in. Um, I did see a uh, question on the side, which was about the uh, energy footprint of Kadena, if we have estimates for it. We don't. Um, but I do have a fact that I want to drop into all of the other people who are listening is mine because most of them are proof of work people. So that big sphere that they built in Vegas uses more energy per year than all of Bitcoin does. So like a giant like 16K display that they made that looks awesome it uses more energy than Bitcoin. So if like anyone ever bring up energy gets on this, be like, look, the globe in you know Vegas uses more energy than Bitcoin does. So but like, we're talking about the wrong thing here. Um, I think that, that answered the question of do you have anything to add for it? Not the proof of work thing. Yeah. Oh kind of... yeah, the EVM thing is um it, it's the the idea being that um, it's whether or not we want to focus on integration or people actually coding in Solidity and moving Solidity apps over. Um, Solidity is, you know, a really unsafe architecture. And what's more, it's a crowded market. It's basically what every other layer one is doing is, you know, that people talk about, right? And that's, you know, I'm not trying to pretend like we're so much smarter than them, although we probably are. Um, it's really more that, you know, there has to be something on top of it, you know, like just providing EVM. Okay, well, we provide a horizontally scaled EVM. That's great. But remember, Solidity doesn't have, Solidity isn't like PAC, it doesn't have natives for crossing chains. So, you know, you're gonna have to do more work to move state from one cadena chain to another chain. It's still better, you know, but apps basically have to pick a home chain and stay out of each other's way. And then they're gonna be back to the same, you know, you're gonna need something like Arbitrum or Optimism like stuff, even just to scale across chains on cadena. So there are pitfalls, there's commercial pitfalls. Um, and, you know, and then the second question is what, what's really gonna move the needle for cadena? And, you know, the answer to that question is integration. And, you know, and connecting to the outside world and bringing TVL on chain and, you know, uh, 
all those good things that we're working on right now with bridge partners, which you know includes things like bringing stable coins on platform. Um, one thing there Sorry, is I that was just on my end, but I think I missed about three or four seconds of that. Will, did you hear that? I did. Okay, oh, never I mind. my connection. Apologies. You're good to go. <laughs> uh, in any case, uh, you know, some of it is that you know people want to be able to integrate, you know, like their front end apps. Like there's so much front end code and things like that. So the combination of you know wanting to be able to face off to some bridge and give them a familiar interface or face off to some DAP and give them a familiar interface, but meanwhile have Pact running behind the API is even another way to go. So this is, as we kind of start, you know, once we launch our new website and kind of complete some of these big initiatives we're gonna be doing in the fall, um, I think this is a discussion that is going to take off in the community, which is like, what do we really want the blockchain of the future to look like? And is there a role for EVM in that? And if there is, then, you know, there are, as Will described, there's a lot of really interesting ways to integrate EVM technology into Cadena. And, uh, but it's not something, you know, one thing we're trying to avoid is the, you know, if you build it, they will come mentality. We're trying to focus on integrations that can happen today you know, things that we can change. And then also just making it easier and easier and easier for people to use Pact, for people to use our standards, you know, the whole Cadena AI thing there. I mean, if you haven't checked out Cadena AI, it is the hottest thing ever. I mean, it's it's a complete no code um, way to mint NFTs. And it really shows Marmalade at its very strongest. So, you know, so that we're making investments there. But I think that conversation is going to get really interesting, especially as the layer two situation shakes. Like Will was saying, layer twos are centralized. Being able to offer a scalable, decentralized backend for maybe a layer two running EVM, you know, might might be the right answer. So there's a lot. It's a lot of different ways you can go, and it's 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 got really interesting components, and it's the kind of thing that you know we'd love to hear from the community about too. Man, that was an awesome soundbite. Uh, we gotta we gotta clip that and share that. But yeah, Cadena AI is is doing some amazing amazing stuff. I really want to host a like a walkthrough of where we mint something live on the stream. But uh, I think if you look at just like the last three weeks alone between Swarms Finance and Cadena AI, seeing all these community uh, organization and facilitation tools come online is just incredible. Um, I've already we've started to see some adverts in the comments already about some different DAOs. You know. Love the shout outs. Uh, so cool to see uh, some DAOs starting to organically form. And uh, we'll continue to, to highlight um, DAOs that, that form. So please uh, keep it up and can't wait to see where that goes from here. Have a few other, a ton of other questions actually. Um, but I think this is a, a pretty cool one. It was asked by Fudo on Discord. In order to optimize latency slash settlement, does it make more sense to expand the number of chains on ChainWeb or on a multi-chain layer two? Uh, so latency and settlement aren't really impacted by having, by the number of chains. It's one of the key features of chain web is that you can expand it out and those parameters stay the same. Um, and you know, in my mind, there's you know, things that are built for settlement and there's things that are built for not settlement, which is basically trading and other stuff. And those ones need low latency settlement, 30 second minute latency is perfectly fine. Um, because that's you know, where the actual store value is. What you care about is more the decentralization and uh, you know, the, the decentralization and the distribution and you know, make just making sure like no one has control over it and that it's you know, the system will always be online and always running. Um, so you know, I don't really think that you know if you're looking for something that is going to be you know sub second latency, that's always going to be a layer two, and that's probably always going to be centralized. You might get some proof of stake at that level, but it's always going to be at least somewhat centralized. DK magic. Um, yeah. Oh, except the way of a ZK magic wand and make it decentralized. Except that you can't actually like do ZK that fast usually. And also it's one at a time. So yeah. I mean, but ZK magic, yes. And uh, I saw someone asking me about, I think it was in trying rollups, which I guess that comes to a more general comment of if we, like if we always were chasing the next buzzword that comes out of Ethereum, we would never catch up because they just swap between buzzwords every six months to a year. And then like the real stuff does come out, but like they just keep adding new, they just keep like changing terms and 
going after that. So, you know, uh, I mean, you know, rollups are always going to be for layer two. And right now we have a scalable layer one. That's really one of the kind of the active like leadership questions is, you know, like, are we looking at, you know, like we are, are we just this weird hybrid between layer one and layer two where we actually have a scalable layer one so that almost is behaving more like layer two and how do we do the integrations necessary so that, you know, we have a, you know, a path for people to be able to, uh, you know, deploy apps in a decentralized environment that can actually scale, um, you know, without having to, or yeah, just like that, that, that it can do just that. It's, you know, I mean, there's you know, anything based in EVM is always going to have scaling issues. We've got to fix that by having Kadema. Yeah, and I just want to say that layer two work is is very active right now. We have uh, we've already shown some demos to builders, people on our builders call. Um, you know, the way we roll is we don't we don't really talk about stuff it, until it's like real. So you know it, but layer two is coming very soon, and it you know and it gives you all that. It gives you fast finality, and it's still packed. You know, so it's it's something that. But it's specialized, you know, it's the kind of thing that like it does increase the complexity of your application. You're using a layer two and a layer one. I mean, for many people that won't matter, you know, for people who are doing like a game or, you know, something where the stakes are a little bit lower than like, you know, millions of dollars in TVL or something like that. So, you know, in that case, you're just going to want to kind of slow meandering, clearing back to the layer one and you're going to be fine. Um, so, yeah, I mean, layer two is, you know, it's like Will said, layer two is what you do when you want snappy finality. But for settlement, uh, you know, proof of work is a scalable proof of work is kind of the conversation ender. You know, it's like it's it's by far the most decentralized way to clear crypto. Everybody knows that. And the only problem is, you know, like. It was really exciting when Pepe coin took off on Bitcoin, you know, on BTC on the Bitcoin network, but like it made it that you couldn't clear a vanilla Bitcoin transaction for like two days, you know? So like scalable proof of work is the future, whether people know it or not. I mean, that people on Kadena know this and, and like Will was saying, and like I've been hearing, you know, it, it used to be just nothing but hate for proof of work, you know, for people who, you know, didn't really get it. And now you're starting to be people, you know, we're really, all, every, you know, we go to conferences, we, you know, we reach out and people are like, it's really interesting that you guys are proof of work. And I think that's coming from multiple angles. Um, but I, I think the analysis that Will was saying of it being the fact that there, every, everything on Ethereum is moving to layer two. That's clear. You have entire layer one projects like Solo turning into a layer two project. It's all centralized. You know, it's really giving up on the decentralized thing, you know, with this kind of pinky swear that, you know, oh, in about five years, we'll figure out how to decentralize all of it with brand new technology that nobody knows what it is yet. So, you know, it, it, it but there's other reasons too. There's, you know, that we won't go into as much here, but, you know, let's just say proof of work is proven and we're the only scalable version of it. Right on, right on. Proof of work is proven, and we're the only scalable version. Man, Stu, you're just on fire with all these uh, little one-liner quips. This is awesome. Uh, yeah, really, really fantastic. So, oh, here's an interesting question. This is a maybe developer question that we can hopefully take uh, briefly and then move on to the next one. Backend developer with no JavaScript experience, what do you re recommend to learn or focus first, Pact or Kadena JS? I, you know, I'm, I'm going to jump in on that one because we're, we're going to be launching some just incredible experiences for learning pack very, very soon. I mean, pe community people have already been involved in them, like a learning platform, um, you know, that really gamifies and makes it fun to, you know, and, and, you know, gets, gets people and, you know, gets, gets their, uh, gets their FOMO going for like writing packed and writing. It's not just packed. It's, it's JS. So it's like, I think it's kind of you just go for it and you start checking out all the things we have to offer and, and just play around and it's going to get easier and easier. And the great news is you're going to learn both. So, you know, and, and eventually I think, you know, Pact is going to be one of those things where sometimes you're really going to need to know the ins and outs of it. And then sometimes there's just going to be solutions just waiting for you. You know, you can go ask the community, hey, guys, has anyone done this? Someone's like, yeah, I did it right over there. You know, you go and copy paste that code. I mean, I, you know, it's not... Some, some developers look down on that, but it's really important to have lots of code examples to go off of. And then, and then you learn JavaScript. JavaScript and Pact is a great combination. We got a fluff question here. 
Who is better at chess? Would Tyler stand a chance against either of you two? I rarely play chess. I don't think Stuart and I've ever played chess. Yeah. Wrong Do you company. play chess? Wrong company. I play no. chess as a kid, yeah. But, um, Wrong company. Yeah. Here, here's a, the, the real question is, what would be the chain web version of chess? I'm thinking like, um, you know, the, the version of chess, no. bl- uh, what's it called? Not, not Blitz, uh, like Siamese chess, or uh, there's a better right. name for it, where you have the two boards and you take pieces and you pass it to the next board and you can <laughs> transfer it. I'm imagining like 20 chess boards, all games played in parallel. And then once you have a, a proof of burn on one board, you take a piece, it's gone. Then you can pass that piece to another chess board and you can place it just Tyler, like we, we transfer. Are you sure you should be uh, leaking all this design alpha? Wasn't this in Star Trek with like the multiple boards with chess pieces that moved up and down? That sounds hot. Right? I don't know. I'm kind of into this actually. We should do like I some love that kind of stuff. Massive, massively multiplayer. I want to see a developer do a multi chain uh, uh, treasure hunt, you know, mm. where, where you have to figure out which chain this or that is on. You know, of course, it's hard to figure out how to do these things that a guy can't just, or, you know, somebody can't just download the code and you know, figure out the answer, but yeah, another design challenge, right? Uh, Greenbeard in the event of a major economic downturn in the near to mid future, what steps has Cadena LLC taken to be able to weather the storm in order to continue development? Sure. And I'm happy to answer this question because of course, you know, it's a really worrisome time and it's, uh, you know, like alts are getting pounded, you know, you can't, you can't miss it. It's it's a uh, it's a rough rough time to be, you know, a believer and an investor and people who want to put their money into the things that are really going to like pay off in the future. Um, so you know, I'm I'm happy to share that uh, Cadena is very financially solvent. That we we maintain anytime we talk about growth and Cadena has grown a lot. You know, Cadena has more than doubled this year. Um, we make sure that we can sustain that running at full tilt for well over a year. Uh, you know, I, I won't say two years, but, you know, there's a whole thing in startups that you don't really want to, like, hoard cash because, it, you know, as long as, you, as long as everything's going fine, you know, you don't want it, to. It's just not the best thing to do. And it's also we've got a lot, of, you know, and that gets into the token economics things. We have there's a lot of things that have to happen. It's not just the company, you know. We have very important grants that that are launching all the time. Um, And uh, but, you know, we still need the company. And so, you know, anytime we grow, we've got budget for twice that. We've got a year at that twice budget. And, you know, and it's something that is top of mind always that we're playing the long game. Uh, We need to be here, you know, uh, going forward. And so and we also uh, in another interesting question that that people might wonder about is that you know, the regional banking situation has just been dicey as hell. Uh, everybody knows this, you know, and like if you're a crypto company, it's hard to get bank accounts. So I'm happy to say we have triple diversified on that um, and not just diversified in that in terms of that, but also doing kind of prudent things like, uh, you know, uh, having some some of our funds be diversified into things like treasuries, not just crypto. So uh, we have a multi pronged uh, attack on not just resilience from a money point of view, but resilience from the United States just being the most hostile freaking place to crypto you could possibly imagine. I mean, one thing Will lamented about many times is that we didn't found outside of the country. And the US just is not doing a good job making it easy to innovate and bring these great things to people as a US company, but we're fighting the good fight. You know, we're, uh, we're, we believe in decentralization, we believe in what we're doing. And, you know, and so we also take these things extremely seriously. We take our economic security extremely seriously and we take um, being able to have a bank account very seriously. So that's something that uh, we're in very good shape on and we're ready to weather any storms that come in because, you know, some of this is just that long game. We've got to just be there because we all know crypto is going to turn around. We, it, it's coming. It, it's, the signs are already there. You know, people, you know, it's, it's just funny how humans are. You know, a year ago, there was just so much hate. Now you look around and people are like, huh, you know, like, so what, what is this crypto thing about? And you see new interest coming from the outside. 
you know, it, it's just, I mean, it's just so predictable. <laughs> I mean, what we don't have, of course, is some of the macroeconomic conditions. You know, we don't have, and who knows if we'll have those exact conditions again. Um, but that's another place where people, you know, governments seem to like to make the same mistakes over and over again. So, you know, who knows? We might be back in a QE situation at some point, and and then you got all this trap capital and a bunch of weird stuff starts happening. Who knows? Right on, right on. When Stuart Haber on campfire? Oh man, love to have him. <laughs> oh yeah, wow, done. You are asking, you shall receive. Incredible. Uh, let's see here. Uh, question for Stuart. Cadena NFT is a currently single chain with Marmalade V2. Will an NFT hash be reserved across all chains so cross-chain transfers works kind of like K accounts? Exactly. That's exactly what it is. Um, and one thing we, uh, with the T colon protocol, uh, we made an important fix recently in V2 that includes the chain ID. So that means that and of the minting, right? Or sorry, where the token got created. That's very important because while, of course, a token could be on multiple chains, you have to, it has to have one origin. It has to be created somewhere and can't be created anywhere else. So there are some really, really interesting problems. We're almost going to like make, we're definitely punting on cross-chain right now because uh, just because V2 has got so much amazing functionality. And by the way, I just got to give a shout out to all the NFT builders in the community uh, coming together to help us with V2. Uh, it's been one of the most exciting things I've ever seen at Kanena. Um, you know, really helping us shape version two as something that will hit the ground running, that'll give builders what they need to make competitive marketplaces and still just crush everything else in terms of like, you know, like for instance, just this whole debacle with uh, open in, uh, OpenSea dropping NFT royalties. I mean, that's it's embarrassing. You know, it's one of these things, it's supposed to be one of the things that makes NFTs different is that, you know, creators can get paid in a fair way and, you know, can get part of the secondary market action. Um, and by the way, it's not like these things aren't complex. You know, there's always ways, it, there's always going to be ways for sellers to, uh, you know, unless you just lock everything down. Yeah, I mean, you see this in the art market, there's always going to be ways for sellers to do crooked stuff, you know, like, even, you know, like they do the sale on Marmalade, but then they, you know, they call the guy, they call their counterparty on the phone and, and collect, you know, collect some cash in a dark alley. But, the, but the idea is that you want, you know, why do you have standards so that the vast majority of people using these things who want to support artists, who want to be part of exciting things and, ex and creative things, you know, get to participate in this. And in, in Marmalade, you're just never going to be able to turn that off. Creator makes, creator decides that this thing's going to have a royalty kind of royalty forever like that's just how that's that's what's great about marmalade that's what's great about pack um however it has been just so important for people to come with a commercial mindset and say no you've got to have this you've got to have that you know you got to have the ability to have auctions that you know like be able to run multiple auctions on the same sale i mean some of the things that are coming on v2 are just are really going to be amazing but cross chain uh is like an even more mind expanding one um, because, um, you know, again, you have to really make sure that somebody can't mint on where, the, where they're not allowed on another chain, that they can't create. Du We've got the duplicate token thing worked out with T colon. But, and this is something we learned our lesson. We're not going to be doing any of this design without being involved with all the amazing builders in the ecosystem. So, that's really the next frontier is cross-chain NFTs. And, you know, that's that's going to be Marmalade 2.1. Awesome. Got a question from Ryan Maletti. Speaking of the blockchain of the future, what is Will and Stewart's view of chainless wallets like Lynx? Has it inspired anything? Tyler, can you educate Will and I what a chainless wallet is? Or yeah, maybe Will knows. Will, I think we already talked about it, right? Where like the wallet just, you know, you're not even aware of what chain your wallet, your coins are on. And yep. it just abstracts over that for you. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, I mean, no, it's, I mean, it's inspired. I mean, it's, I mean, it's definitely inspiring to finally see stuff like this coming onto the market because, you know, we were talking about, okay, how do you actually get people doing most threaded apps and everything else? You know, one of the next steps is links. Is this idea that you don't even need to care which chain your coins are on 
that the wallet just handles it for you. And uh, then after that, you know, like, like, and then after that, then we start to get apps that are interacting with, you know, chainless, this idea of chainlessness too. So it's multi-threaded in the background, just like it is with a computer. And, you know, this is a developer concern, but not an actual user concern. Right on. Uh, by the way, I, I know that some folks were, were commenting like, oh, you skipped my comment in the live stream and you put all the other ones on. Um, I'll just sort of say that uh, I'm, I'm sort of ad hoc at random going through comments and there's so many of them that we haven't been able to keep up. Um, so I'm, you know, currently jumped back to 937 and seeing some awesome stuff there. Like 3D chess is like like in Big Bang Theory. So uh, yeah, I hope you don't take it personally and, you know, just keep asking things and, and chiming in while we get to as many as we can. That said, we are very close to the end of our time here, basically at it. Um, in case you didn't already hear, there is an after party for today's Kadena Campfire featuring uh, some of the lovely participants that have been this call, like Kobe Lazar of Koala Wallet um, and Kadena Mining Club. So Kadena KMC by Koala after party will be super, super cool. Uh, definitely go check that out if you're still wanting to continue your Kadena train this morning or day. Uh, I think we have time for maybe uh, one last uh, question, and I might take it as moderator privilege to ask one um, just for fun. Uh, I'd, I'd love to hear a little bit about uh, what each of you are most excited for in two different time frames. The first one is in the next year, and the second is in the next five years. Excited for in general? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. That's a hard one. I mean, in the next year, um, it's, I, I think that we'll be at a crypto winner by then. And, uh, then we'll get to actually stress test all the foundation work that we've been doing. So I'm excited to see the fruits of that labor. Um, I think the community and the ecosystem will be significantly more built up. I'm excited to see the fruits of that labor. Um, I'd be surprised if we don't have a in-person conference before this time next year, although it's possible that it might be a little bit afterwards, more towards like the fall, um, if we don't do it sooner than that. But, uh, yeah, so those ones would be the thing. So five years, I mean, it'd be like probably year three or four of like the Kadena conference, which will be freaking awesome. The you know, dramatic community growth, uh, getting to see true multi-threaded apps running on or multi-chain apps that are, you know, abstracted over for the user. Um, and just like all of you know, the snowball effect of just you know, what we've been working on with the developer experience and building up the ecosystem, just seeing where that goes and how amazing that's going to be. Um, and I think also just like getting to meet a bunch of people in person at the various conferences that we're probably going to have done within five years. And that'll just be really cool. Also, more shirts like this, which would probably go in our swag store. We have, people may have noticed we have a lot of bright colors, like a lot of pinks and a lot of greens. Uh, both Sue and I love it. So we're just like, yeah, when we worked with the branded guy, he, he offered this up and we're like, no, we love it. He's like, well, this is great because no one uses these color schemes. I'm like, oh, they suck. We look great. I don't care. Love it. Yeah. When merch Dow. <laughs> Stuart, can I turn it over to you? Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm just this, uh, you know, we've been laser focused on getting uh, to this uh, website relaunch in the fall and uh you know a broader go to market surrounding that um everybody knows we haven't done a good enough job telling the story of cadena um you know our community is very nice but gently or not so gently reminds us of that you know when marketing that's always like the question um and i can finally answer that question to say this fall um you know that's something that's very big we're we're very close to making an extremely hiring hiring uh i mean that we're we are. We will have a CMO uh, within the next two months. That's for sure. Um, and uh, you know, and and we've all we've been hard at work for a long time. Uh, we have a lot of like amazing things to talk about in terms of making more clear what Cadena's vision is and like how we see Cadena. But you know, we, we that's rolling out with the website. So there's some there's some really incredible things that are going to like make it clear why Cadena is a different kind of company, why it's a different kind of technology and why it's here to win. And, you know, and the thing is, is that when you go to ETHCC or some of these big crypto conferences, people don't, you know, pe people have heard of Cadena, but they're not, you know, they're not seeing enough Cadena and that's going to change. Um, that is, that's, that's something that, you know, 
we've been focused on the technology and also on the on the builder community with our grants. You know, Tyler, you've been very involved in this, um, and you know, but we've also been focused on you know coming correct with this with this relaunch and uh, and you know and and there's the, plenty of people want to hear this story. You know, the the people are glad to hear that pe that somebody's doing things a little different. You know, because when you look out into the world of crypto right now, if anything, it's consolidating. It's just consolidating, consolidating, consolidating on EVM and layer two. And it makes sense. You know, I, uh, Ethereum, you know, is working this layer two story brilliantly. And, uh, you know, and it, I think it's tough for a layer one alt chain that's running EVM because increasingly, why would you do that? You'd really run on a layer two so you can get all, you can get, you know, you can get to Ethereum. So the idea of, a blockchain that is not just about, you know, making crypto easier, but it's also about being a public resource that, you know, companies can use for anything. And why? Because we have real gas stations. We have this ability to come onto our blockchain and give you a, you know, really nice experience. And maybe you don't even have to know you're on a crypto platform. Um, so I'm really excited about that. And then once that happens, then I think is when the really interesting conversation starts. Um, it, you know, once, once the Cadena's advantage is really demonstrated and, and, and really connects with people and not in our vision and everything, then is when the really exciting conversations start to happen, um, where, you know, the builders, you know, really come out of the woodwork and start showing all the amazing things you can do. And, you know, so personally, I'm very, I'm always very, you know, I'm a musician and an artist, so I, I'm, love nfts and i love marmalade so that's that's always going to be a special focus for me but but you know also uh you know once these bridge things launch and once we have some good tvl and stable coins on platform um you know Kadena is still the best DeFi, uh you know layer one that you could possibly have because it's the one that's actually safe and can actually scale and can clear the u.s stock market so uh it's really when all those things, but we, and what's more, we have things that other people don't have today. Marmalade today is running on the concept of decentralized infrastructure. People are minting onto a ledger that is a, that is a shared ledger. And that just makes their lives easier. It makes the code safer. It's, it's diametrically opposed to how NFTs are rolled out on Ethereum. Um, so, you know, the future is here. But the future is in the future, and you know, and and, and the future at Cadena is is the future where crypto really demonstrates the advantage and starts changing people's lives who aren't just necessarily, you know, maxis or investors or the brave people who like you know wade their way into crypto. It's it's actually like changing the world, bringing decentralization to the masses because we need it more than ever. Beautifully said. With that, we're going to conclude today's campfire. Don't forget that there is an after party that's happening on Twitter Spaces. Uh, hopefully someone can post the link down below here. And with that, be well, and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much, Will and Thanks, Stuart, everybody. for joining us today. Yeah. Thanks, Tyler. Great as always, Tyler. Thank you both. Fantastic.